I want to introduce um, Hasgeek, the Geekup, and uh, what we are discussing today. So, how many of you here are JavaScript programmers? Most of you. Okay. Um, how many of you here are actually good at JavaScript, or do you do this for jQuery? Yeah, jQuery. So, how many of you are only jQuery programmers? Okay, so that's um, not that many. Uh, that means the rest of you actually think of JavaScript as a full-blown programming language that you actively use. Is that right? And so, you, you guys write serious code in JavaScript. Okay, you don't need this even then. You already know everything. <laughs> so, by way of introduction, um, actually before that, how many of you came to JS school in January? There was a JavaScript conference here in Pune in January. So if some of you came for that. I see a bunch of hands over there. Um, most of you have not heard of JSO. Have you never heard of JSO? You don't know what it is? All right. So JSO is a JavaScript programming conference. It had three editions uh, over the last year. The first edition was in October last year in Bangalore. The second one was in Pune this January. And the third one was Chennai in February. And uh, now we're coming out to the second edition in Bangalore, which is two weeks from now. So that's October 19th and 20th, and this time it's a much bigger event. Mainly because it turns out that a lot of people are actually really interested in JavaScript, um, which was something you couldn't say even a couple of years ago. A couple of years ago, it was all about jQuery and uh, making small animations on web pages. It suddenly become more than that, and um, there's a principal reason for that. Something about JavaScript suddenly became really popular. Who wants to guess? Node.js. Node.js. Okay. So, Node.js introduced um, people to an unknown, undiscovered potential with JavaScript. And um, it's made a lot of people sit up and take this language, give the second a language a second glance and say, uh, what the heck is this? You know, like uh, this toy language that is really frustrating to work with because it has so many defects, so many unexpected corners. It suddenly become such a hyped up language. Yeah. And what the heck just happened? And um, if you keep seeing new streams, like as of yesterday, LinkedIn made an announcement saying they moved from Rails to Node.js. You know, for not everything, but a bunch of the servers. And they say that everything got faster when they did this. Yeah. And so, what the heck just happened? I mean, JavaScript has always been known to be a really bad performing language. Yeah. So, this um, sort of is an interesting time to be looking at JavaScript because the problems in language haven't gone away. They're all there. You know, they, they're, lang they're problems that are there to be there forever. Because once you put out a specification, and there are people writing code against the specification, you can't say the spec is wrong to change it. Yeah? Because code that's been written against the spec must continue to work forever. So it's a question you know, saying, how do you now deal with this? The fact that you got a language that has a very troubled past, but is suddenly considered as being a very, very important language going forward. Okay. How do you deal with the fact of this change? This is not how normally languages develop. Normally languages sit in the sidelines until they are mature and then they come out in the foreground. Okay. And this is true for most languages. Most languages that you hear of, you know, like a lot of people got excited about Rails from 2004 onwards. Um, and that was because of Ruby. But Ruby was not invented in 2004. Ruby had been invented several years before. And it took a long time developing. The same thing with Python. You know, uh, most people discovered Python for web programming somewhere around 1998. Now, I'm sure most of you do not know this. Yeah, but 1998 was the year in which Python became famous as a web development language. And afterwards, it was Django that created the revival of Python. But when was Python itself created? The first version of Python was when? Any, any guess? Somewhere around that. I think it was 91. 91 to 98 was Python's development cycle before it came out into the limelight. With JavaScript, there was no such chance. In 1995, it was public in the limelight, despite being an unfinished language. Okay. And now, in 2011 and 12, we are suddenly discovering the fact that this language is a lot more important than we thought it was, mainly because it's everywhere. Everybody has a browser that runs JavaScript. And it's a language that you simply cannot ignore. There is nothing else you can do to do programming in the browser. Okay. Despite everybody's attempts to kill it or replace it, there's CoffeeScript, there's TypeScript, there's uh, Dart. This BB script, yes, Microsoft's infected attempted killing JavaScript. None of these have managed, or so far managed, to replace JavaScript. So it's a language that simply doesn't 
um, want to go away. You know, they're just too deeply embedded in the modern day ecosystem. So, given this, the interesting question now is what do you do with this? You know, how do you understand JavaScript in the context of where it came from and why it's important? Okay. Um, on the one side, there's so much hype about it. On the other side, there's a whole bunch of flaws with it. So what the heck is going on around here? Okay. And that's really what I'm hoping Naranji will explore. Comparing JavaScript with other languages and putting it in, in context so you can make sense of what the language is about. So to also introduce ourselves, um, I'm with a firm named Hasgeek. Zeneb and I are from Bangalore. We just came in here um, for this event. We also did the JSU event back in January. And uh, in 2010, we did another conference here called Docket HTML5 that looked at HTML5 as an emerging markup language. Back then, it was not important enough. Now it is obviously commonplace. Everybody uses it. So, what we do is organize events like this. Um, we right now we do one every week in a different city, uh, but we do a bunch of conferences. So JSU, which is two weeks from now, is a two-day conference which is entirely about JavaScript. Then two weeks later, there's another one on Android called DroidCon, which is again going to be two days with international speakers coming in talking about the state of the art with Android. Uh, 